There have been a couple of commentaries, both pro and con, on the whole Raylo question, but not a lot of them have examined how Palpatine fits into the wider picture. So in this commentary, we're going to look at how Palpatine may have tried to manipulate the relationship between Rey and Kylo. Now, where we see things in The Force Awakens and Last Jedi, um, Kylo does suspect there's a connection between Rey and him, and in The Last Jedi, the answer is Snoke. Snoke just manipulated their powers in order to make it seem like they could communicate with one another in order for him to capture Luke Skywalker. But Rise of Skywalker gives us a different answer, that Palpatine was manipulating things. So what is Palpatine up to? Now we know his major goals have always been immortality as well as control of the Empire. So I think what's going on with Rise of Skywalker is they're really concentrating on the immortality issue. So it's revealed in Rise of Skywalker that Rey is Palpatine's granddaughter. And it seems puzzling that even if this is the case, why would the Emperor let her go off to Jakku and sort of train in isolation? I mean, the basic logic is obvious that he wants a very strong, powerful fighter in order to take advantage of her. But then why set up the First Order, why set up Snoke, and why manipulate Kylo from uh, sort of very removed, at least directly? But if we look closely, there is some evidence both within the texts, um, within the sequel trilogy, and as well as the prequels that um, this is sort of still very much within character for uh, Palpatine. So if we look at a certain comic book within the extended universe, we see that Snoke is talking to Kylo, and he sounds a lot like Palpatine, sort of hinting at, uh, you know, he fears Luke Skywalker, he doesn't want a direct confrontation, but he respects the power of the Jedi. And this very much echoes uh, Palpatine, both fear as well as desire to have control over the Skywalker bloodline in order to manipulate its power. Of course, from the original trilogy, his first plan was to manipulate Anakin or Darth Vader directly. He'd have Darth Vader as his loyal apprentice and be able to manipulate his force power sort of uh, indirectly. And we all know what happens that Vader betrays him, the Emperor supposedly dies, and that was the end of the story. And Rise of Skywalker has him come back, and apparently he actually created Snoke. He actually claims this, he, that he made Snoke. So that he's able to create these powerful force users, but he wants more. Um, and we can get into why he needs to do that in terms of what Palpatine's self-interest is. But here I'm going to concentrate on the Ray Low question. Now, in terms of Ray and Kylo, it's a little all over the place. It's, certainly there's nothing overtly romantic in their first encounters with Force Awakens and Last Jedi. But when we look more closely, there clearly were more things going on, but we just don't know what, right? Rey is a very powerful force user, and we never know why, and now it's answered. It's She's a Palpatine. But if we look closely at the scenes, I think there's a lot more going on. In terms of why Rey was able to resist Kylo, the Palpatine issue really solves that. The Palpatine gave Rey a lot more power in order to make sure that Kylo uh, would not have access to her mind. But why is he doing all this? Well, if we look at the prequels, um, Palpatine always has this style of creating conspiracies and it's very long-term planning. So with episode one, even though he loses Darth Maul as an apprentice, he doesn't seem very concerned. In fact, he has that famous quote that he tells Anakin he's going to be looking over him for quite some time. But the fruition of the plan takes decades. It's really not until 10, 20 years later that he's able to manipulate Anakin directly when he goes from being a boy to being an adult. And even Darth Vader himself remarks on this, that um, a lot of these events are predetermined, and the Emperor is just trying to figure out how to manipulate the, um, the events in his favor. So this sort of long-term planning is not very new for him. I mean, again, it sounds costly, right? I mean, Snoke wants uh, Kylo to bring uh, Rey to him to, in order to get Skywalker, and that ultimately ends up killing him. But from Palpatine's perspective, that doesn't really matter. So he loses uh, Snoke, but he can just create more Snokes. I mean, Snoke is not the real issue. And Skywalker sort of reveals that Rey and Kylo are this kind of unique dyad, and that he wants access to that dyad in order to restore himself. And we see that at the conclusion. He's able to tap into both their power in order to restore himself and basically gain immortality. But of course it ends when uh, Rey is able to turn the tables and just destroy him um, by using sort of the power of the Jedi who are helping her. So the plan didn't work. I think that's probably the biggest flaw in this kind of explanation is that 
it's not the planning of creating this Raylo relationship just to get them together in order to manipulate their power, but that he doesn't really have a backup plan as to, well, what if the plan goes wrong? What if they team up against you? That is not really well thought through, and that does seem a little bit out of character for Palpatine. But in terms of creating all these little mini conspiracies and working behind the corners with other people sort of doing his dirty work, that does seem more in line with Palpatine, and the fact that he would sacrifice his granddaughter is also, again, very in line. I guess the deeper question is how conscious was um, Rey or Kylo about this, because it does seem at the end of Skywalker they do sort of form a weird tactical as well as romantic relationship where they kiss one another and then Ben dies after he's redeemed himself. And there's a lot of questions about what happens even there. Why did he disappear? Where did he go? He doesn't show up at the end with Luke and Leia, so is he now a Force ghost? Has he been redeemed ultimately? Why does Rey take up the Skywalker name? Why does she not keep the Palpatine name, especially now that uh, Palpatine has been vanquished? Um, yeah, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, but I think in terms of the broader strokes, the Rayla relationship and it being manipulated by Palpatine is not as crazy. It obviously is very convenient for the plot line, but if we look closely at TFA and TLJ, this is a legitimate interpretation, although, of course, you have to make a lot of uh, little changes in your, your head. Probably the most difficult part is that, you know, Kylo telling Rey that she's nobody and being very sincere about that, and then later sort of backtracking, saying, oh no, uh, you were nobody, but that was sort of like a guise that Rey's parents did in order to protect her from Palpatine. So obviously you have to strain a little bit the uh, text to get to this interpretation, but it's not completely crazy. And obviously it's a little weird that it does end up um, just killing the Emperor all over again, which uh, kind of defeats the whole purpose. So, what do you think? Is there a really a real conspiracy between Palpatine manipulating Rey and Kylo, or is this just the writers uh, trying to come up with something to block uh, a big plot hole, or did Rey and Kylo sort of figure out the conspiracy and then team up against Palpatine when they realized they were being manipulated? All right, this has been an SW commentary on Raylo and the Palpatine connection. Uh, for more Star Wars Explained, just hit the like button or subscribe. Thank you again.